Welcome to another exciting episode of Will It Run It. Today I'm excited because I got a whole bunch of new stuff I'm playing with here and, uh, and testing. I bought this Boog RV. This is a compressor fridge, a uh, 12 volt fridge. <clears throat> Um, I've loaded it up with 15 Dr. Peppers and it's already cold. That's actually ice. I don't know if you can see that in the video. Uh, it has been running for a while now. Um, and what I'm trying to do right now, I've got it plugged into, uh, to grid power. So it's running, it's a uh, 12 volt, but it's going through that 12 volt adapter. So, um, uh, I, I bought this thing. My idea is to bring this thing on my camping trips and other videos. I've tried to get many fridges to run with jackeries and whatnot. And I just decided, you know what, this is the better way to go. Uh, this thing says it pulls 60 Watts on max and then 45 in eco mode. I've got it on max right now. I've got the temperature set to 35. Um, and it is, it's, it's running right now. What I'm trying to do is see, not, not just will it run it, I know it will run it. I wanna see how long this thing can run. Uh, and so I also bought, I've got two of these uh, Mia Day, Maya D, whatever you wanna call those batteries. They're 36 amp hour, they just came in. And I've got, I, I wanna see how long this mini fridge will run on one of these batteries. And so I've got two figures that I'm doing. It's uh, 78 degrees in my shop, uh, roughly. And so I want to see compressor runtime as well as start and stop runtime. So for my test bed, like I said, I've got uh, 15 cold drinks in there. They've, this thing's this thing's been running for a few hours now, so it's stabilized. It's it's at 35 degrees. So I'm just maintaining the temperature. I'm not taking hot drinks and seeing how long it takes to cool them down. This would be kind of like a real world example um, <clears throat> on a time where I would go riding. I would already have this thing running, I'd already have it cool, and I'd already have the food cold that I'm putting in there. Then I'm gonna go and use it. So I'm gonna see how long I can anticipate one of these 36 amp hour batteries running this mini fridge as well as the compressor runtime, because if it's really hot, the compressor is going to run more and my numbers are going to be different versus if I go in the wintertime and it's 35 degrees outside, this thing may never have to run. Uh, so my runtime will be a lot more. So to get a level playing field, I'm just going to get compressor runtime. So uh, in order to get the compressor runtime, because this is going to be a while and I'm not going to be sitting here babysitting it the whole time, I tapped on the circuit that runs. There's a fan, a cooling fan that um, cools the compressor and the uh, evaporator, or I, I don't know if that's the evaporator, the condenser probably would be a better term for that. Um, so that fan runs when the compressor's running, which is all I really care about is how long that compressor's running for. So I put um, these alligator clips onto a relay and then also ran them back to the fan. So the fan still will run. This thing will still run like it's supposed to. And there you just saw that the relay just kicked off because it finished running for this cycle. Now plugged into this, I've got my, this is a Node MCU. It's pretty much just calling a web API that I have running on my server and it logs in a SQL Server database for what time it starts, what time it stops. And then once I get those numbers, I calculate um, how long it went between run times and also how many seconds that compressor ran for. So at the end, I'm gonna add all those numbers together and see what I get. The voltage is 13.24. I'm excited to try this out, so let's get started. All right, we are up and going. I got it plugged in now uh, to this first Mia Day battery. It's going through this little um, cheesy little adapter that gives me a 12 volt plug. That's the 12 volt plug this thing came with running into the device. Uh, and it currently says it's 31 degrees in this, uh, this thing came with a manual. It's kind of confusing to use, but I've got it set to max. So it should be using 60 Watts. 13.1 volts is the reading on the battery, which is kind of nice. And then it has a low battery cutoff over here that you can set to high, medium, and low. And the direction said the voltage that it cuts in and cuts off at, that is designed for if you're going to run it on your vehicle, like, um, and, and you, you want it to run, but you don't want to kill the battery on your vehicle. So now the argument is, would you rather have the vehicle battery die or would you rather have all your food spoil? 
Um, if you're like me, I carry a jumper around with me, so I I would want this thing to run until it just can't run anymore. But, you know, that's just me. I, I guess it depends also because I've only got drinks in there, so <laughs> the drinks aren't going to spoil if they if they get a little warm. Anyway, I have it set on the lowest number there so that it will take the lowest voltage before it shuts off. It has been a while now, and this thing is saying, the fridge is saying 10.8 volts. Uh, I've been running the compressor on max, and it says E1. It's got a little battery gauge here, but I don't think that battery gauge is accurate considering I'm using a lithium battery. Uh, really, 10.8 volts is pretty darn dead, even for a, uh, a lead battery. But um, just, to, just to compare, let's check it with the multimeter and it's saying 10.9 10.89 so it's it's accurate as far as that goes it's not enough to start the fridge so let's go let's go check out the numbers here are the results from the lithium iron phosphate battery what this table logs is what time the compressor started what time the compressor ended and then how long it ran for and then how long it was idle for before starting the next run. Um, there, there's a lot more data than what I'm showing in this table. I'm only showing the most recent ones. If you look at the top of this chart, it shows when the battery actually died. It looks like it tried to start the compressor because it, um, it went from you know 360 or so seconds to 188. So it definitely shut off um, mid run because that would have been probably another 360 seconds. And then the next runtime was eight seconds, and the one after that was six seconds. Those were probably the battery it was trying to start up, and the battery just said, "You know what? I'm done." And so uh, that's that's the advantage of these lithium iron phosphate batteries, is they they have battery management systems inside of them. So when the cells get so low, they just say they cut out and they say, "I'm done." So here are the sums after I added all the numbers up. So uh, runtime hours is how many hours the compressor actually ran for. The time frame hours is what time I started it subtracted by the time that it was completely done. So it basically ran it for 31 hours with you know the environment being room temperature, but compressor time is uh, nine hours, compressor on time. So like I was saying earlier in the video, if you're in a hot climate or if it's outside in direct sunlight, you're going to get less runtime because the compressor still only has nine hours of running. But if you're camping in the wintertime, nine hours may last you a week because it doesn't really have to run that much. I now have the lead battery hooked up to the fridge. I'm going to check the voltage here real quick. We're at 12.88 volts on the lead battery. Now, I, uh, I did let this run for about two hours uh, on the plug just to get everything stabilized and back to uh, the normal temperature. Again, I've got 15 Dr. Peppers in there. It's currently at about 30 degrees, so I'm gonna now power this thing on. Hold that for three seconds. 12.8 volts. All right, we are now beginning the test. I'm gonna see how long this uh, lead battery will run the compressor, the uh, fridge for, and see how that compares to the lithium battery. This thing is now super dead running on the, le the lead battery. Uh, I'm getting an E1, 11.5 volts. Um, this thing actually ran a lot longer than I thought it would. So I'm doing 11.5 volts, which is pretty darn dead. So now let's head over to the computer and see how much runtime we got out of this lead battery. So there you have it. Uh, the Lawn Tractor battery ran the compressor for almost six hours, which is only roughly three hours less runtime than the lithium iron phosphate battery. So the Lawn Tractor battery actually did a lot better than I thought it would. They don't have a rating, this one that I have. I, I think it's a $25 battery from Walmart. They don't have an amp hour rating because they're not designed for long runtime. They're designed for cranking amps and starting up small engines. You really have to kind of look at all options here. There's pros and cons to both. The lithium iron phosphate battery cost $129 from Amazon, and the lawn tractor battery was only 25 bucks. I think. It may have been 30 I can't remember, but they're cheap at Walmart. Um, so 
price per amount of runtime, the lead battery wins hands down. However, there's a lot of other things to consider. One is that Mia Day advertises it can handle 2,000 cycles. I'm pretty sure if I did this lawn tractor battery uh, that many cycles, <laughs> I mean, I maybe can get 30 cycles, just a guess, out of that, because lead batteries really aren't designed to be fully charged and fully depleted. They will last a lot longer if you only deplete them half, uh, which in this case means three hours, uh, which now I would be at a third of the capacity of the lithium iron phosphate. The other thing to consider is uh, lithium batteries are lighter. Anyway, those are the numbers. Hopefully that helps somebody. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you want to see more interesting videos like this. Thanks for watching.